page we were done with the coefficients and this is essentially where we start the analysis um, now there are two different inputs here one of them is how often you want the program to save uh, the data as it's uh, so the larger the better it will be quicker so I'll just put like six months so the data will be saved every six months and the structural response save period now this is uh, this is kind of important. Now, if you put a small number here, this is like 60 means, for example, it will save the structural response every 60 months. If I put, let's say, two months here, let's say save it, it will save the structural, uh, 3D structural response for single axle, tandem axle, tridem axle, and quad axle in, in all analysis per points will be saved. That's a lot of data to save every two months. So it's gonna you're gonna run out of uh, server space very soon. So if you really don't need this, don't uh, put a small number. Um, or alternatively, you can run it this way. It's gonna take more. You know, it's not gonna take more time. It'll just take more space. You can download the data and just delete this project to save space. So for now, um, I'll just put um, every six months. Let's say save the structural response uh, and uh, both of them no I will actually I don't want to save this very often for now but a little really large number um, so we don't I'll show this later on so when you click run analysis the analysis is going to start um, so now it's actually going to the MATLAB server where the main calculations are done uh, so now here you will probably see an equivalent easel based on the axle load spectra. This is this all the axle load spectra I gave 22 million easels. Please note this is based on Ashto 93 method. Uh, so it is really not used in any of the calculations. This is just for reference purposes. So if you were to have the axle load spectra entered into the Ashto 93 uh, traditional formulations, you would get this many easels. Again, ESLs is not used in the calculations. The actual axle load spectra is used. So, uh, it, you know, it did uh, start master curve for layers and sublayering. Now it's doing the climatic data. Uh, done, apparently it's done now. Uh, it's now calculating the thermal stresses. Uh, it first run the thermal cracking model. I think that is also saved and done. Uh, it's calculating the structural responses for now and then it will go to the, um, the damage responses pretty soon all right so i'm gonna wait for a few seconds here just to show you and now as you can see as it runs it's showing all the distresses so you can actually go up and down to see how the distresses look like so some of the cool features here you can turn on and off one of the distresses on this graph if you don't want to see the rotting you know some of them if you want to see um, the actual numbers you can just move your mouse around and you can see the actual numbers here and the same thing here so you can actually see the uh, IRI and how it changes over the years so um, it's running relatively fast uh, for this one this didn't have a chemical stabilized material layer so it is, it's faster CSM layer it requires stresses uh, to be calculated in addition to strain so all that superposition increases the time but so this is where the runtime so this is the starting point and this is the end point uh, and time also so so it's almost done to 40 months uh, so it's about two and a half minutes essentially so essentially yeah so it's about uh, two and a half minutes and it's all done for 20 year simulation um, so now once it is done you can see the again the, uh, all the graph and this is the main output of the program obviously this is bottom of fatigue cracking for this pavement this is a top down fatigue cracking for this pavement so um, now we also have thermal cracking really low numbers that means that there won't be any um, thermal cracking if you see a really low number so just ignore that means everything is zero reflective cracking is all uh, not updated because there is no csm layer or eac layer so uh, it, it won't show 
Now, uh, when you go to last run data and view results, that's what we were. I mean, when we click analyze here, it actually directed us to the results page. You can see from here. Now, if you want to uh, generate a report out of this and then click yes here, it's based on this particular run or last run. Now it's generating the PDF and now it's actually uh, it's done and it's um, downloading, downloaded. So this is the type of the PDF you're gonna get. The first page shows which project it is. Um, you know, report creation date and project properties, the summary of the layers, uh, you know, the summary of the distresses, the stress outputs, and each of these layers, the properties of each layer, base layer, AC layer, and other base layer, which was a sub base in this case, subgrade layer properties, and the class distribution that was entered, axolot spectra in, in, in a form of a bunch of graphs, uh, four pages of that the uh, calibration coefficients and, and and that's it so um, another cool thing you can do is you can download raw data I will show I say click yes and it will save this raw data um, so it's still saving you can see uh, it's a rather large Oh, it's saving two of them. I'm going to stop one of them for some reason. There are two of them downloading. So if you click this one, so it, in, in Mac it goes directly to my downloads page. So there's this uh, like a temporary name for it. But so this is where the main um, main information is. All the information in it. So it actually um, this is where all the uh, main inputs are but this is uh, this is a better way of showing uh, all the inputs uh, that went into this particular run these are a bunch of text files so that it's easy to see in Mac it's pretty easy you know click space and then go down obviously if you're a Mac user you don't have to I don't have to tell you this the damage response where the fatigue cracking are all in this folder damage resp folder so if you go here so so damage bottom up uh, BU is bottom up cumulative percentage these are damage due to each of these axles uh, top down uh, these are the critical strains due to uh, quad axle for example for bottom up cracking so for every 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 month uh, and also for every single quantile there are five quantiles for each month so can plot the critical strains that are used in the model uh, here um, so and a number of cycles to failure for bottom-up and top-down cracking used the same same way that's for each quantile for each month here actual fatigue cracking bottom-up cracking is here uh, it's a text file you can just uh, copy paste or open it in uh, Excel very easily and plot them and do whatever you want to do with them so rotting and base and all that so thermal cracking is in a separate folder all the inputs and monthly thermal cracking is um, right here so there's a lot of data to play with uh, in this folder